that I'm going to merge two lectures into one because one of my PPTs has disappeared. It's not a problem because obviously there is in some interesting intervention. So let me have a longer talk and then we conclude my talks today and instead of me continuing, we are going to the pro another project meeting. That's okay. So give me an hour, we will finish by half past 11. Then we can have a short break and continue with project meeting there. So, intervention. Interesting because, okay, uh, the basic goal of our software is to trigger intervention. The basic idea is that there is a software which detects, detects crime, then it immediately alerts the police, and the police has to intervene. One could argue, and this argument came up, that the police sometimes is not nice in India, and they don't want to intervene. But I would say that this is not a problem, because the software will force people to intervene, will force authorities to intervene, because with the help of the software, we will create evidence that aggression has taken place. So intervention is usually just a straightforward consequence of criminal activity if it is an intervention done by the police. There is not much to study about this kind of intervention because it's a legal procedure, the police goes there, it does the intervention, the crime is being hopefully stopped. The more interesting thing which we need to talk about is intervention in general. It's not I mean, it's in, in a sense, it's not directly related to our project because we intend to create police intervention. But I felt it might be useful to talk about intervention just as a kind of additional point in order to understand everything, all the phenomena which surrounds the notion of intervention. So I'm going to talk in this talk, I'm going to talk about impoliteness and aggression, immorality, and by by using a metapragmatic angle to study intervention. So basically, uh, meta uh, okay, so metapragmatics is the way in which we, we talk about language used by using language, right? So for example, this is, you, what you say is great, it's a typical metapragmatic command. This kind of metapragmatic activity is there all the time in cases of aggression. So in this talk today, I'm going to talk about metapragmatics in particular in terms of intervention. The, there's a question, uh, I mean, inter, uh, metapragmatics might also be useful for us if we study lexical items because metapragmatic comments help us to understand people's evaluative reactions. So if there's a certain evaluative reaction, it's more likely it's going to be metapragmatically voiced unless there is silence. Say for example there is a there is an act of aggression. It might be that the victim will say something like, how can you say such a thing? It's a typical metapragmatic comment on the fact that what you are saying is rude to me. It's aggressive. Or like in the case of your political debates. But would you just find being Stop being rude and aggressive. Uh, it's a typical comment which you would make in the course of an aggressive hot debate in the media. So again, studying aggression, uh, metapragmatics can be quite useful in aggression. And in a sense, we could argue that at least a certain amount of our lexical items which we identify as our inventories in the project are metalexical by nature and more loaded, of course. We talked about this in the previous lecture. Now, morality. I just go back to morality again. So why morality is important? Morality is important, well, when it comes to aggression, we already discussed why it is important. But when it comes to evaluation, morality is also in quite important. Uh, we talked about the fact that we need to study people's evaluative attitudes. I would add that, that when it comes to evaluative attitudes, it is highly influenced by moral perceptions. I have a very simple understand, a very simple example here, which has no relationship with aggression. I just want to show you 
why morality is so important in evaluative behavior as well. Say one of my colleagues tell me or say to me, I love that you failed that annoying student. And I would start of thinking, you know, was it a compliment? Was failing a student because he was just annoying, it's not nice. It's immoral. So when somebody told this to me, would it be still moral for me to accept this compliment? And the problem is that if I accept this compliment, I could feel that, okay, I accept this speech of compliment because it's nice to be complimented. But then I might be in trouble because if I accept this compliment, others may judge me as immoral from an outsider perspective. So by, by evaluating it positively, I'm actually performing an action. Now, if it goes to aggression itself, scenarios which we study, uh, I told in the previous lecture, I told you about this moral pressure which is on us in these scenarios. Like, for example, I'm an observer of a crime. If, uh, if I say that, ha ha, it's nice that this person being abused, I also occur as immoral, right? But if I'm the wrongdoer, I may pretend that it's a moral thing for me to do what I've just done, but in the end of the day, I'm aware that it's immoral, so my behavior is being influenced by this, by this deeper layer of sense of morality. So our evaluations are highly affected. This is why we need to get rid of the brown and Levinsonian notion of pure means and communication. It's not means and I mean means and communication is influenced by senses of morality. Uh, now, we agreed in the previous le lecture that there are two senses of morality. Morality one and morality two. Morality one is the moral order. Morality two is the popular sense of morality. In our framework, the aggression framework, we are working at both senses of morality are equally important. But morality one manifests itself in two senses. A, it manifests itself in place and time. So certain acts should take place in certain places and times. Like uh, remember midnight at the bus, you should talk to a stranger, at least not in certain settings. But also it's B, it's present very much in the preference structure. So if there is a discrete response, then it's very likely that this morality one is being upset. But also there is this philosophical sense of morality. So that's morality one, the philosophical sense of morality, and morality two is the technical sense. So philosophical sense of morality, basically we enact morality as we talk. So for example, how can you do this to me? How can you be aggressive? Even if you make this meta comment about the other being aggressive, you enact morality because if you say, hey sir, you shouldn't be that rude to me, then you basically say that you are being immoral because treating others by being rude is not nice, right? So at the meta-pragmatic level, we enact a sense of morality. Now, when it comes to intervention, our topic now, this kind of morality, morality one, this popular morality, is particularly important. Why? Again, the aggressor often says that, you know, it's my moral duty to be aggressive. Like, remember this honor phrase. It's crazy, but they refer to morality. But when you try to help others, you may also refer to morality, so it's my duty to help. So intervening person may refer to moral issues or ethical issues, like in the case of police. In the name of law, you are being arrested. It's a typical ethical command. It's my duty to arrest you, which is moralizing by nature as well. Right? So this morality is very much there in case of intervention. Now, let's go to intervention. Are you still with me? That doesn't make sense. Well, so we are not so much interested, but we are interested in police intervention, but for the time being, let, we, we can't say anything about this because it's going to happen, hopefully, with the help of our program. What I would like to look into now is bystander intervention, so alternative interventions triggered by, um, by, by, by criminal cases or improper cases. So how bystander intervention looks like, and this builds into Man's previous question, how it works. 
Uh, I would like to explore the relationship, how politeness, impoliteness, rudeness, and aggression work together in such scenarios. So how moral or politeness values are evidenced by metapragmatic meta behavior, in particular by metacommunicative voicing. Metacommunicative voicing means these comments which I make in the course of communication, like, how can be so cruel to me? It's a typical metacommunicative voicing. Intervention, well, before we go ahead, it's also worth noting that there are two kinds of intervention. There is the ratified form of intervention, which is an intervention by the police. The police is ratified to intervene. <coughs> However, there is also a sense of unratified intervention, which is the bystander intervention, that something wrong is going on, and you as the men on the street are supposed to help, or you want to help, then you are not really ratified to do this, because it's not your method, not your duty to help, but you kind of ratify yourself <coughs> by referring to your <coughs> sorry, moral duties. No, but we have, it, these cases are quite interesting, and in general, more, uh, aggression is quite interesting from the perspective of the politeness and the impoliteness scholar. We agree that we are not really talking about politeness and impoliteness. However, these notions loom at the horizon all the time, so it's very difficult to say that we are not really interested in them because they are still there. Now, why aggression is interesting? Because aggression can be cloaked as polite, right? So for example, I talked to about this to you two days ago, that you can bully someone and try to cloak it in a, in a, in a, in a polite way. So hey, uh, for example, you want, if somebody wants to rape a woman, she, he says that, oh, wow, my dear, you have a beautiful body on the bus. It seems to be fringed as polite. But it can never be polite, partly because we know that it's immoral, right? It is immoral. So people will understand that this is not nice, so it cannot be genuinely polite. While, for example, you may go there and say, you stop it now. You are an intervener, a bystander, say, you stop it immediately. You will be rude. But can you be genuinely impolite? No, you can't. Because if you are moral, you help someone then your behavior cannot be genuinely, genuinely impolite. Because it's normative, you store the normative order, right? And this is why what we do, this kind of project, is so interesting. Well, I told research that we shouldn't do politeness theorizing, but it's so in interesting from the perspective of politeness theory. It is interesting, because there's a sense of ambiguity. It's not genuinely polite or impolite, what we study here, exactly because of the morality factor involved in this sense of behavior. When you, try, when you try to intervene, what are you doing? You actually refer to a social oath, or a moral oath. Say that it's my moral duty to help. Sometimes you also refer to social oaths. You don't shouldn't behave like this, or it's not polite. But it's not the wrongdoer may also refer to, for example, social and moral oaths. So these kind of social and moral uh, oaths are behind our argumentations in case of intervention. Are you still with me? It's been a long day, but so good. Again, um, it's partly related to our project, but you can see that what we are doing is quite complex from the politeness theoreticians' perspective. Now, when I studied bystander intervention, I suffered from something similar than detention up to a So I had a problem that I couldn't find naturally occurring data. But I'm, I was very much interested in bystander intervention to see aggression in operation, how aggression is being stopped. So what I've done is that I studied some reality shows. Reality shows are not real, naturally occurring, because they are secretly camera and they are prepared. However, they are naturally occurring in a sense that the participants don't know what's going on. So their behavior is at least naturally. But I studied both a TV series, What Would You Do? It's an American series run by the reporter John Quinones, was premiered in the US in 2008. But basically what happens in this film is that there is a little scenario 
say somebody is being abused in the park. There are people passing by and the camera is recording the event. And later, some the reporter comes out and, inter, um, and, and sort of asks, interrogates the, the person who helped, what was his motive or her motivation to help. And also he asks those who failed to help, why they didn't help? You know, it's quite an interesting one. Why didn't you help? What was your reason? There's a lot of shame factor involved in this, of course, because as I told to Mongi just in the previous session, there is a sense of social pressure to help. And this is why, although people may say that I'm not helping, but not helping is not nice. And most of these people want their faces to be hidden on the camera because it's so embarrassing that you didn't have to look at my So it's quite an interesting data. I, I didn't have any, an extremely large data. I studied 170 video recorders by using one of my poor PhD students. I gave it to students in three years, but uh, that was quite useful. So let me show you just a few cases of intervention quickly, what I found there. Abusive boyfriend. A couple is arguing in the park. Bystanders overhear the argument but seem conflicted over intervention. Finally, an elderly female bystander decides to intervene. So the boyfriend uh, screams at the, at, the, at the young girl, Stop crying, shut up! And then the elderly female goes there saying, Hey, buddy, cool it. And the boyfriend says, Mom, can you just do our own thing? It's my girlfriend. Can you just leave us alone? And then the female says, no, that's not how you treat someone. How about I call the cops? And the young guy disappears. So what we can see here, somebody decides, it's not the police. Of course, you want the police to intervene, but sometimes it doesn't happen. And we as aggression series still need to understand how intervention operates. So in this case, because it's unratified, this person, is, she is not the police, she has no right to intervene, the wrongdoer begins to debate. I can imagine that sometimes the wrongdoer would debate even with the police. But what is the nature of this debate? This is an interesting question. That if you have a look at the debate, there I underlined a few utterances, but a few sentences within the lines. The wrongdoer says, it's my girlfriend. Can you just leave us alone? What is this? You should intervene, it's my, my thing. You don't belong to us. So you just told me that it's sometimes people don't want to help because they think if they it's not their friends, they're unrelated, so they shouldn't help. It's the same in the West. And often wrongdoers argue that, hey, why are you doing this? You shouldn't do this. It's our thing. You're unrelated to us. If you look into Brown and Levinson, it's quite funny because Brown and Levinson actually have a very good point about this. The right to be, to let unimpeded, negative face. You just should leave me alone. This is typical negative face, actually. You shouldn't intervene. It's my duty. It's my, no, it's my right to be, to be left undisturbed. In other words, the wrongdoers often make an appeal to politeness. You are being impolite for intervening. Leave us alone. Don't intervene in my matter. That's a difficult appeal of auto politeness, right? It's quite funny because politeness is there on the level of argumentation. By the end, the female says what? No, that's not how you treat someone. Treating someone is moral, is a moral issue. It's a meta pragmatic command, a meta pragmatic appeal to morality. I'm not ratified to intervene, but I do this because it's my moral duty to do. So it's part of the intervention argumentation. Does this make sense? So this is how it works. I know it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's unusual that the wrongdoer defends himself, but they do. So this is how it works, real data. Okay, the same hidden camera, the same guy slaps, slaps, slaps the girlfriend, and this time there are, there's a young woman who decides to help. Sometimes there are females who help, actually they're quite strong, as you say. So this time the boyfriend screams, Natalie, sit down and listen to me, and he even pushes down Natalie. A young female goes there this time to help the girlfriend, saying, I could see you from up there. You don't push a woman out in public. This is complete bullshit. And then she turns to the victim, 
saying, seriously, do you need a night phone? And the guy starts to scream again, Natalie, sit down, she's my girlfriend. <laughs> and then the young female says, wait, we are talking to you. She is not a dog, you are just a little punk as kid and getting on my last nerve. So it goes a bit violent, it's quite tough. But what, again, what's happening here? Sorry? This is the that you should have. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, but, but it is, you see, um, you need to be aggressive to prevent the question, to address the later question. So, but, but, but I told to you guys in the previous lecture that there are two kinds of aggression, the aggression itself and the responsive aggression. So like in the case of political debate as well, there is a potential responsive aggression to aggression, but this responsive aggression is usually the rightful aggression, by the first, the initial aggression is the immoral aggression. So this is why these aggressions cannot be measured in the same way. I mean, this difference between potential aggressions need to be built into a model. Right. Yeah, it's still intervention, equal intervention. I mean, intervention itself is often aggressive. I think about the police. Come, lay down immediately, down to the ground, now. And you know, this is what? This is aggressive. aggressive. But do we condemn the police? No, they do their duty. Well, yeah, we hope police they do their duty. So it's their duty to, if, if needed, it's their duty to make the criminal lay down on the floor. But by doing this, they restore the social order, ideally. So what? You know, it's, it's moral aggression. Does this make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. May I ask something? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, I was also like, interested in such a trend, but in one experiment, there was this global fight in the park. Say it again. A global, a global. Yeah. A man, a man and a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like when the man abuses the woman, like, everybody wants to intervene. But when the woman abuses the man, like the direction is quite different. Yeah, there's an ambiguous situation, but you don't know, yeah, whether you should intervene because there are ambiguous cases. I, here I'm trying to study cases which are not ambiguous, of course. When it comes to ambiguity, there is the, there is, it's a complete nightmare. For example, I studied the case when there was a, a two girls talking about that one of them have become pregnant and she doesn't want to tell her boyfriend and intentionally in the secret camera they were seated next to an elderly couple who were eardropping, they were supposed to eardrop and the lady was really anxious because everybody knows that it's not nice that this girl doesn't tell to her boyfriend that she's pregnant it's so ambiguous, but you know, it's so ambiguous because you still, it's not your method, there's no aggression. What can you do? So it's like, there are situations they don't know whether you can intervene. And it's very true that if, 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 if it's another way around the aggression, like a woman beating up her boyfriend, it's more difficult to decide what to do. Although I would say that you should equally, I mean, ideal, in an ideal word, gender shouldn't matter. So if somebody's being abused, it should just help. Yeah, that's what I meant, but when you talk about morality, like, people seem to moralize that uh, the, the man deserves it, the man deserves it, we don't. Well, there is to be so. Is it, does it not depend on the situation? Yeah, it does, but how do you know that you don't treat a lady like this? But when a woman does that way, then they don't judge the woman, they judge the man. Yeah. In both cases. In yeah. the first case, he's the aggressor, and in the second case, he's, been, uh, he's the victim, but it is something that he has done, and or something that he has not done. That is supposed to be aggression, and people try to moralize it, people try to like, say, uh, it's okay to beat up a man who does this, or does it. You, I mean, do you mean that if there is a woman beating up a man, they yeah. would moralize or not? I think it depends on the situation. No, but in the, in the same experiment, people did not... Uh, like the opinion of people. I mean, in this uh, experiment, there were no cases when a woman beats up a man. Right. Like, not this one, but in uh, another set of experiments. Yeah. So the, this young couple, they were fighting in the park. And in the first, the man like, pushes her around, and then like, so many people intervene. But in, in the second, like, he, he beats him to the ground. Nobody, nobody cares. But that's too bad, isn't it? I yeah, mean, that's too bad. Yeah, it's <laughs> really bad. Uh, what to say? I mean, 
it's interesting to know what an ideal bird, at least we should wear towards uh, a system, a program which has to prevent any kind of aggression because it's not right. I'm, I'm moralizing now, it's not right for anyone to be beaten up irrespective of gender. So, I, 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 while it is interesting, of course, it's just some empirical, it, it's an empirical evidence, but we shouldn't accept that this, is, this should be the case. So we should work against this. But I can imagine that this, this is the case at the moment. So people don't help even if they're good. So yeah, good point. And uh, you talk about police, uh, uh, non-police intervention, which I see is very good. Because last night I read in the Facebook that there was this rap victim, okay? And like, uh, her rap was caught on this uh, camera. Mm. And then her response was, he was pulling my teeth off, my teeth off, and the robot sensor there, right? This, this is in the lift, okay? So I knew that he would have finished raping me by the time the police arrived. Uh, so the victim, so hold on, the victim, I mean, I'm just sure if I, if I, if I completely got it, could you explain it? Yeah, sorry. So there was this uh, rape victim, okay? Yeah. So like, she was talking about her rape, like how she was raped in the lift, okay? Yeah. So like, uh, before she, she was raped, like, even outside, she, uh, the man was abusing her. Yeah. And then, uh, once she's inside the lift, there's a camera. Yeah. So like, he's, he's abusing her, still abusing her, and uh, yeah, with a hammer, he just hurt it, it uh, like he's pulling off her teeth. And then he's trying to rape her. So like, her, uh, her comment was, I knew that he would have finished raping me by then the police arrived. Well, this is no good. Well, but what to say? I mean, ideally the police should arrive earlier. So this is something beyond what we can analyze or what we can talk about. It's more like a, um, a, a, a an issue for the police to address. Yeah? So... Yes, but... Uh, so I think we should, I mean, we should focus on linguistics though at this stage because this is something far beyond our discussion and sense that, that, you know, the speed by means of, of which police can help is, 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 oh, is an organizational problem. Yeah, that's something that made some noise. Yeah, but that's bad. I mean, this is, uh, this is a pretty general way that, like, this is not my, my method to help. In, a, in a ideally, people should help, but it does happen that people don't. It's very difficult to predict whether this bystander intervention will take place or not, right? So that's, yeah. But I see your problem. You are, you are thinking very empirical things. Yeah, yeah. It's just that, yeah, but what to say? We are linguists, so we can only think about the language they intervene on, right? But, uh, how, how do you moralize it uh, as a linguist? Well, let's talk about moralization here, yeah, mm -hmm. But we are now talking about the, the cases when, 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 when a clash takes place. So let's focus on these rather than cases when it, it doesn't take place. When it doesn't take place, do I have slides on, on no, sorry. No, easy on the slides, but people, like in my data, people were asked why they did not. For example, you can take the example of a Mexican immigrant. Yeah. So like, some people like, you can justify it by saying that they are Mexican. I, they have come to my country legally. That's how they try to moralize it. So, you know. Yeah. Well, all kind of absolutely. <coughs> I mean, there are all kind of moralizing things. But I will go. Not let's. Well, hold on. Not let's not hijack this. So we are talking. Hey, we are talking. You asked another question before. Let me talk about your previous question. So you asked me that uh, 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 how do people who, who fail to help moralize their failure? Often what I saw is that A, they pretend that they agree with the bully. So for example, the, 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 the woman who was raped in the lift. It might be that if you ask others why didn't they help, they would say that, no, that woman behaved indecently, so what do you expect? This is a typical answer. So those who fail to help usually feel ashamed, especially if they are pressured, if others ask them why you didn't help. Everybody knows that they should help. This is common sense irrespective of culture, it's just a human based uh, social psychological type of behavior that we should have people in trouble. However, we often do not have because we are afraid of the bully, we are afraid of getting into trouble, or we are just don't want to 
they are just bastards and don't want to have any energy or use any energy to help. So there are many, many, many reasons why we didn't help. But once they ask about ask us about this why we didn't help, everybody feels that it's a failure, it's a complete face loss. So they come up with all kinds of moralizing things like I've seen a case when one of these cases when there's a gay couple, they go to a restaurant and they are kicked out by the waitress. And then nobody helps. It's in, in, in Texas, big guy sitting there. And this reporter goes and asks one of them, why didn't you help? And then he says, I hate gays, why should I help these guys? So it's a typical case when, of course, the wrongdoer may know that he's doing something wrong, but he just puts it into a moral cloak. He says that, so, uh, you know, I, I was just surprised what the waiter was doing. They should be kicked out. So see, wrong do, uh, those who fail to help others have always have good excuses to explain why they didn't help. Okay, and in the intervener response, okay, there. Well, let's go through the analysis, but how about that? And then we can, let, let, oh. let, 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 let's finish this and then talk, is it okay? Because we should finish the slides first and then, okay, so go. I have intervened in two cases and I would first talk about that. That probably relates to some extent what you are talking about. Uh, in the one case uh, in Hyderabad, when I was passing through a, a, a deserted place uh, where very few people pass by, I saw a young couple, very young couple, probably uh, in the very early of their team. So this boy was beating girl, he was slapping, uh, and he was pushing her against the ball and hitting and was looking here and there and when there was when there was nobody would slap or somebody's little father would slap. I was I was coming, I noticed that this the behavior, the body language was not uh, normal. So I just stopped and noticed that this guy is beating. I went to him, I said that why are you beating her? He said, get lost, that's my matter. The, the same reaction that you talked yeah. about. And he was so, so threatening in the sense that I knew that if I intervene a bit more then there would be a physical fight between both of us and I did not, did not want to get into that. So in order, but I seriously wanted to help the girl because uh, she was seriously in a bad condition, was trying to control herself but it was difficult for her. So what I did is that I, I, I pretended that I have gone, I just went a couple of uh, steps ahead and I waited for people to come and when two, uh, two people I saw coming, I stopped them. I said that this guy is doing this, he's beating, he's beating this girl but he's not beating because three of us said, just move a bit here and there and see that what he's doing. I said okay, let's see, the two of my age. And he was beating, actually when we went a little ahead, they started doing the same and then we went and said that three of us, oh what are you doing, nonsense and he said, then he didn't did not say actually anything. He he was on bike. He started his bike, took his girlfriend and went. Okay. Uh, yeah. So so actually uh, you are absolutely right when it is one to one, then the morality works in a different way. When there's a people involved, then the morality works in a very different way. When there's a pressure involved. Yeah. And uh, uh, probably uh, the kind of when there's a society involved. So that's the incident actually. There was another actually incident in which the aggressive behavior that I showed was very, very subtle because there was a girl and she was being the what you would tell in calling cat calling. The thing was happening. So there was only two guys. So usually when a girl walks alone and this happens. So I, I just, I also walked with the girl. I did nothing. I pretended that I am with girl. She was little ahead. I walked with girl and I told very simply, don't worry, I'm just helping you. And then guys didn't do anything because they knew that there's a guy with the girl. Okay. So this is a subtle behavior of aggression. Subtle behavior of aggression. I didn't do anything because when there's a girl with the boy, uh, when there's a girl with the boy guy, then usually people don't do that. Anyway. So, so that is up to you. How do you look at that within your framework? I just supplied you two examples. But uh, very, now, very, very good examples. Uh, so there are now two incidents. Now I uh, want to ask you a question because uh, you put one of your example under the framework of morality. You said that 
uh, you, you say people you are talking rudely, which means that you are you are trying to say that you are not moral, you are not behaving in a in a typical sense of morality. So my problem is that uh, uh, when you when you look at the uh, things in a social normative behavior, for example, to talk politely, that this is a normative social behavior, and you go and you relate it with morality. If it is the case, then everything to a great extent is within the purview of morality. What you say actually implies this in my understanding. Then where do you conventionalize the, uh, uh, conventionalize the way of linguistic, be uh, linguistic behavior and where do you situate the linguistic behavior on the notion of morality and, uh, address and the behavior which is impolite is contextually right and uh, shout, for example sometimes is right for example shouting in field for example you are playing football and you are shouting yeah. that cannot be termed as immoral at all in any no. case okay so that is dependent upon the context where you are shouting where you are talking so there you take but there it's not moral but but my problem is that you the, the way you theorize everything in my opinion that puts everything largely under the under uh, under the purview of morality then how do you uh, differentiate between the conventionalized linguistic behavior and the morality? Hey, 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 but Sorry, sir. No, 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 it's, it's easy to answer this. Thanks for asking me to an article because now if you, any of you guys have similar examples, please send us three because it's, it's useful. Um, morality, you are right. It's not always there. It's not always there. I would say so. Morality is there if there is an evidence for it. Because we linguists would never argue that anything exists if there is no evidence. Morality is there in my data because people evoke morality on the metapragmatic level, right? There all the time in this kind of data. But it simply can't be there in a football match where you shout. It can be a sort of aggression, but not really aggression. I mean, okay, letting the steam off. But it's not aggression in our sense of aggression or technical sense. And this is why nobody would bother with shouting it when, it's, when shouting is normative. Again, what we are talking about here is something highly situated, so criminal aggression. This is why it's moral, right? So this is highly different. But I wouldn't talk about morality, there would not be no evidence for morality. For us, morality is important because it's being evoked on the lexical and meta-lexical and meta meta yeah. uh, no. Okay, so it's being evoked. If, if you would like to ask, and, and if it doesn't make sense, please say because then... But, but, but my only problem as a student, my problem as a student of language is that I fail to see in your, um, uh, I mean the impression that I, I received from your talk that confuses me to differentiate both things because at, 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 uh, uh, because on the one hand you say that humans generally it is said that they are conventionalized linguistic behavior. For example, talking with somebody in a polite manner, cooperating, this is is, then you say that this is also related to morality. Uh, yes. How? Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, I see your problem. So it seems that morality is there in different senses and it confuses you. Okay, I, I see the problem. So, uh, yeah, just trying to give a relatively simple answer. So there are two senses of morality, right? Think how things should be. That kind of thing is there in conventional and ritual behavior. Yeah. Oh, it works again. Okay, so this kind of morality, simple morality, is there in conventional and ritual form of behavior. So this is the expected behavior. That's a conventional implication, right? Indirect request. This is the expected order of sex. That's moral in a technical sense. Morality, however, is there in an alternative philosophical sense, when we say something is moral or immoral ourselves. And that kind of morality becomes important in certain salient contexts, like, for example, interpersonal aggression. It can't be important all the time. However, when people behave aggressively to each other, it's something salient. What we study in this program is salient. And this is why this alternative sense of aggression, of, of morality, is here. 
Morality is a moral order, is there all the time. But here I'm talking about something else, right? Does this make sense? Does this answer? Or if not, please ask again because I'm happy to further discuss this. So please ask for it, it, it made sense to me now. I understand that you used in a two different sense, one in a in a day-to-day -day conventionalized manner and another is a philosophical manner and people probably use that uh, the, the morality in the philosophical sense to justify their responses because uh, when this daily case happened and this BBC made a one documentary and the, the interview was taken uh, in, in the jail, uh, the guy who was, uh, uh, who was the perpetrator. So he justified his whole action on the base of the morality that you are talking about, he was not at, uh, there was not a touch of uh, a regret in his voice that he, he, he uh, is actually, he justified his whole action on the ground of uh, uh, the, mo the, the moral lesson, the lesson he has taught to the girl who is roaming with boyfriend at uh, late night. So th that way I understand now probably you then play such things within that very large framework in which this morality works in a philosophical sense. Yeah. Is it right? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, there are situations which are salient. So in, 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 in the normal flow of events, morality is just there as a moral order. So be first response, etc., etc. It's just there. No, no that, that's, how, that's not particularly difficult. These situations, like aggression, are different because in these situations, morality, they are, they are morally salient situations which trigger moralizing commands by the wrongdoer and, or, or, and in particular by the intervening person, right? So this is why it's a different sense of morality. This is why this popular sense of morality becomes important in these scenarios. Does this, does this answer? probably got the sense of what you saying. Yes, so what I'm saying is that politeness is not just about morality, don't mm. get me wrong. And the question that everything is not just about morality, but no theory can be complete without studying morality, so it's, a, it's the other way around. So that morality is something we only, always need to reckon with. Yeah, when anything that related to society. When yeah, but let me need to d distinguish morality one and morality two. Yes, yeah, so it's yeah. quite good that. Yeah. Okay, Guy? Okay, so it, it answered. Yeah. And no, yeah, another yeah. question, I believe, so I'm happy to answer his question if he has anything outstanding. Let's just make sure that it, yeah, or it, it, it's related to, I mean, the question is related to language behavior because about so society, it's very difficult to, to say anything because we can actually work with, with just um, actual examples rather than saying things about society per se, but if, if you would like to ask it, ask it further, feel free to, to... Oh yeah, another question over there, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, referring to this example, you know, the fight between the boyfriend and the girlfriend, okay? So, yeah, when there, are, there is a fight between two, you know, familiar people, that's all right to not to interfere or intervene. But when there are two strangers fighting, you know, with each other, I've seen like, various examples, various situations where two, uh, two strangers are fighting at a public place and somebody else intervenes and that's perfectly fine. People, you know, the, the fighters actually accept that people are, you know, trying to prevent this, you know, and not to, I mean, trying to kind of intervene and stop this. So, what do you, how do you... Well, this is a, again, well, a good point. I mean, it's something similar about mangas before that uh, it might be that, I mean, there's a lot of ambiguity behind these kinds of behavior, so you may or may not help, depending on many contextual factors, and it's very difficult to predict when intervention becomes or is just to be necessary. Mm -hmm. Like in the case of a female beating up a male, for example, or when two guys are fighting. So uh, these are personal decisions. Again, we, we, we cannot sort of predict personal decisions. Like for example, in my data, 
it was very carefully made these these, these uh, scenarios. They always made it sure that there are not too many people around. So you as that person will feel pressurized to help. It's quite interesting because of, of, if there are many people you feel less pressure to help, but if it's just yourself, like in, in, in the case of, of the couple, uh, the guy beating up, up his girlfriend in Hyperbad, then mm. it's, 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 there is more pressure on you to help, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it, this is the same thing. So certain scenarios attract a stronger sense of intervention than others. Obviously, if a guy beats up a girl rather than two guys, equally strong guys fighting, it's a very different scenario. But from our perspective, actually, it's less less interesting because ideally, police should intervene in any of these cases. Let's keep bear in mind that we are working towards a program and we are talking about alternative senses of intervention here. So bystander intervention. For a bystander, well, obviously, it would be that eager to intervene in the fight of two big guys because it's likely that they will start to fight with you in that case. And there are also many ways of bystander intervention because you have no right to do anything. Like in, in England, many people, a good way of intervention if there are two big guys fighting and you don't want to get messed up is just that you start to film them, make it clear that, hey, mate, you are on the camera now, so smile. So this kind of behavior is a kind of intervention as well. So it, there are many ways to do intervention and many situations which trigger or not trigger intervention. There's a lot of complexity and this is what, what is crazy in pragmatics I feel, that in pragmatics it's just a mess. So it's difficult to predict interpersonal behavior. May I? You say the response is per personal. But in the internal example, you say appeal to the Western chivalrous value. Yeah. So if I you say Western, Western. Well, yeah, here it's Western because you don't push a woman out in, in public. This is what I found quite interesting in China, for example. What about men? Well, what about men? I, I, and the problem is that in the West, is a particularly sensitive to pushing women. But I think the same is in the same, same, by the way. Men are not being pushed around by the men. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's you what we don't see, see you know. Uh, it are very rare, very, very rare cases where the men push around. I've seen the women, like, two four women picking up a guy, right? Okay? No, like, nobody else, because, ah, uh, maybe he deserves it. I mean, yes. three four men picking up a man. No, no, three four women. Should have ten also. Three four women picking up a man, I agree. Even if three four men beat up a man, mm -hmm. nobody is going to help ten also. And why? How would we moralize it then? Like, not in the winning. I, I, well, I don't know, because I'm a linguist, I'm not supposed to yeah. predict. I mean, I can only rec study recorded data. So the problem is that you are asking questions about the possible or effects of a situation. But I can only play with these scenarios as an ordinary person and not as a linguist. Simply because, uh, you know, in linguistics, we observe data and see what people do. But this question presupposes that I'm in the action, but I'm not. I'm an observer as a linguist, right? So it's a good question, but I can't answer because I'm not there, it's not in my data. Okay, and so how do you, how do you, uh, as a general question, how do we draw a boundary between impoliteness and aggression? Because if I have correctly, impoliteness is, uh, if you are immoral, you are impolite. That's why I thought so. No, well, no, I mean, impoliteness, so impoliteness and aggression, I mean, there is genuine impoliteness. There is genuine impoliteness. What I'm saying is that you can't be genuinely impolite if you act for a moral purpose. So say somebody is troubled and you help in a rude, impolite way. You can't be judged because impoliteness comes into existence through evaluation. If others evaluate you that you are moral, you have intervened because it was your moral duty, you won't be judged so like that you won't be judged as genuinely impolite. Say, for example, in your case, you said that, that hey, hey, stop. It's, it could be said, I mean, Brown and Levinson would say that it's impolite, because it impeded on the guy's negative face. But were you actually? No. You weren't generally impolite, of course not, because you were a highly moral reason. And this is why it's so interesting from a politeness series. Because it. Uh, I have a question on this. May I ask a question on this? Can you yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, 
Yeah. Actually, uh, about talking this uh, morality and aggression, what about when uh, there is relationship with parents and children? In India, it is very common to find parents being aggressive towards their children. Yeah. Uh, from being impolite to getting violent, they can be around. So, but for Indian scenario, it can't be taken as immoral. Uh, parents beating or being aggressive towards their children can't be taken as immoral. Very good but point. if that children reacts uh, in the other way, maybe for his or her self-defense, the, the child holds the hand of his uh, father who is beating him or her, then it will be taken as immoral. How can he uh, like uh, hold the hand of his father? It is in, uh, it's, it, it's like immoral. Sorry, it's immoral to stop the father from beating him or her. Okay, but it's quite moral in Indian scenario if the child, if the father is beating his uh, children or being aggressive towards him or her. So what's your take on that? Very good point. Absolutely good point. Um, there is a lot of culture variation. This is what I, I can only say that there is an awful lot of culture variation in terms of morality. And we need to take culture variation on board as we study you know, social pragmatics across languages. The social variation is also on the plate when we talk about the software. Because for example, what is a sensitive hotspot of crime? It's also subject to culture variation. What is subject to what is a more local model over there? It's also subject to culture variation. And also, what, what, what is moral and immoral if you make it part of our tagging or you know, lexical items? Uh, it's also subject to culture variation. So it's something that we need to empirically study and incorporate in our, in our examination of aggression. I don't know if it, 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 it answers. I just have to add to that. So how, how would, say, uh, if, if somebody intervenes uh, in that aggression, say if mom intervenes uh, there, uh, and uh, I mean I don't know is is it really immoral? Uh, is it really moral for a father to beat up the child? I mean, fine. Yes, it's yeah. so good. So, Can, can you, can no, actually, it is, in Indian scenario, it is modern. People, if you ask anyone, he or she will say that it's quite modern for the father to beat uh, his children. Because uh, maybe in one way he is doing it good for them. It is good for them to, uh, for their good, he is beating him or scolding him. Well, I mean... Uh, but then there are two scenarios, of course, like one where the father is beating the child for uh, doing some mischief or something like that. And then there is a very common scenario which we find in India, maybe in uh, a bit, uh, yeah, we find it uh, very common. It happens when a father is, uh, like he is drunk, yeah. or he doesn't like something, maybe there is some issues of so-called honor related to the family. Yeah. Like yeah. the father doesn't want the girl to meet a certain boy. Yeah. Because of so-called honor thing, and then yeah. he beats her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is modern for some culture and perspective. We can take it as modern, and we don't know whether. It is. Of course, it may be immoral for the other part of the society. You. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you are absolutely right. I mean, okay. Um, well, I mean, for our perspective here. Morality is, I mean, what I'm talking about now is bystander intervention, so it's just something additional. We are interested in police intervention. Now, police intervention can only take place if something is illegal, and what is illegal is immoral, but it's not necessarily the case that what is immoral is illegal. So I don't know about Indian law, whether beating children is legal or not. If it's legal, then even though some of us may feel that it's immoral, we can't expect the police to intervene. And even, it, I mean, if, if the police um, is kind of flexible, let's put it in this way, and judges a certain event as a kind of family matter, it's very unlikely that they will intervene. So we need to admit this culture variation. I mean, it's an interesting point. My, my response to it is that we just need to see what counts as such a situation in India, 
And if this is not clearly illegal, or not clearly wrong, then we, we can't include it in our, in our aggression detection uh, program, yeah? Uh, yeah. In, in, such case, in such cases, uh, no, 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 not cast. Uh, because you have brought this legal thing into it and then I would like to see it as legal perspective from the morality perspective also. There are incidents where the things are legally uh, uh, wrong, to do something is legally wrong, actually they are illegal, for example, honor killing. But what happens is that it is noticed many a times that because, because police also works in that society where the morality, they, because they are, the, they are also uh, uh, brought up with the same sense of morality that everybody uh, has. So sometimes even if something is uh, illegal and that is reported to police, sometimes police does not intervene on the ground because they think that this, is, this might be legally wrong but this is morally right. For example, killing people, uh, there is a very there's a, 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 there are a number of cases that you can find in the name of honor killing in which what happens is that uh, people kill uh, girls who have got married to the person of another community and the police is seen to delay their action unless there is a huge deal of pressure on the ground that because what was done by the community was right on the ground of morality. Yeah, well. So intervention probably has a lot to do with the sense of morality, the person who is supposed to intervene, I guess. This is a very, very, very good point again. I mean, there is a sense of, I mean, we now touch on a situation, but two things. First, let me answer this particular case because it's extremely interesting. I actually I should make, take a note as we talk because it's very interesting for my own studies as well. So there is a potential situation when there is a community morality which very strongly contradicts with broader social morality. Um, I mean, this is a situation which I can imagine easily taking place in India in particular. It's less likely to take place in, in, in Western countries. However, I appreciate this. This is such an uh, extraordinary case that, uh, but, in, but in, in such a case, in, according to my model, yes, you can be morally illegal as well. You can be morally illegal uh, if, if, you have, if you have a community reason for, I mean, there was a similar case in there in the UK that somebody hit a child with his car and the child's father came out he came, you know, just, he just lost his son and killed the guy on the spot. Now, uh, he finally wasn't jailed or even though his behavior was illegal was they felt that, you know, um, he, he just couldn't control himself and life for life kind of thing. So in this sense, there was a moral balance between moral and lo uh, legal behavior. I think it, in a sense it's going very far from our original discussion though, because it is such an extreme case that let's keep bear in mind that what we want to do is to prevent crime to take place. Now when we talk about crime, we need to assume that something illegal takes place because crime is illegal. What is legal is ethical. And what is ethical is moral, because moral becomes ethical if it's something it becomes coded. Moral is individual, ethical is coded moral. So what I'm saying is that that usually what is legal is moral in the same in, 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 at the same time, whereas it's not necessarily the case that what is moral is legal. So that's the answer. So it's a two-way thing. Can you oh yes, sorry, yeah. I, I was carried away because it's so interesting. So let's, I mean your case, particular community example was extremely interesting, but what I was saying that maybe we shouldn't focus on these cases because we need to stay as, as simple as possible. But in general I would say that what is 
I'm not a legal law expert myself. This is the problem. So we should ask a law expert about this because a law expert may say that, for example, in your community example, there's a local law which overrides broader social law. It does happen. And I don't know about the consequ legal consequences or legal sort of working of this scenario. It's extremely interesting. But I'm not an expert of law. I can't really, I wouldn't like to get into it because, you know, I can only speculate. But let me talk about legal and moral in general. When it comes to legal and moral in general, but whatever is legal is moral at the same time. But not the other way around. What is moral is not necessarily legal. When there's a crime case like this, what is on our screen, then obviously the wrongdoer is illegal and the intervener is legal and the intervener re uh, sort of restores the order of the society. So that's the basic idea. This is why Herod, his argumentation is highly moralizing. Okay? Does this answer all, all your questions? Yes, actually you have uh, situated it within the, the framework you are trying to understand the whole thing. You are absolutely right. We have gone a little away from the point we are discussing. Uh, but since uh, uh, you are trying to understand probably mainly for the pro uh, for the for the benefit of the project that how alternative interventions are done, how, what are the ways that people intervene, and whether and you probably uh, you are probably looking at from the perspective of uh, uh, a moral uh, order, which you say that there are two moral orders. So probably you are looking that through the lens of the, the, the sense of morality that you have developed. Did I get you right? Then I yeah, well, I mean, absolutely. Um, the thing is that inter uh, there are many types of interventions, but it's more like a typological kind of intervention. We are not of a police intervention, which is simple. If you are a bystander intervener, you can try to affiliate yourself with the victim clearly, like in this case. Seriously, do you need, need a right home? You can do it in a more indirect way, like for example, you just put up a camera and start to record them, and you don't uh, don't even address the bully. Like I had a case when an elderly lady held the victim and just hugged her and let her away. That's a very indirect way of intervention. There are many scenarios, many strategies to do this. You can also kind of intervene in a joking tone, you know, just to avoid the, the, the situation to escalate. If you're interested, I have an article about these strategies. I can send this to you. Yeah. So, it, it, it's, it, uh, the types of interventions, which type you choose, doesn't it doesn't have to be. This choice is not moral or immoral because the fact that you in do intervene is moral by nature. Yeah. Not take it any further because that would. Sure. No, I think we should finish this relatively soon, and then exactly. we have some time for the project discussion because it's not very clearly related to the project. So I know it's very interesting, very, very interesting. It's a very touchy uh, uh, topic and everybody has something to say, so I will stop it here. Okay, okay, okay. No, I, I really, I, I appreciate that this is absolutely interesting and and, and you guys like this. The problem is that, that it's, it's very, very, very loosely related to what we are trying to do again because we try to look into policy or try to trigger policy intervention. So I just want, basic, my basic goal was to make you to realize that the intervention exists beyond what we study here. Yeah? And this is a consequence of aggression. Anyway, I had a few more examples. Um, I just show you one, one last, okay? Because it's interesting, it's pertinent to note that although the wrongdoer, and this partly answers your question, by the way. Um, um, so the wrongdoer, um, often makes appeals to politeness, like leave us alone. You are impolite if you don't leave us alone. Mm -hmm. And the intervening person makes appeal to morality. The two can be the other way around. Like in your case, there's a community in which they kill a girl because she married outside. Um, in this case, the wrongdoers make an appeal to morality, and all that there might be different morality appeals. So the broader community from the link, sorry, I'm just talking about the linguist, I'm not the legal expert perspective, because I'm not a legal expert, but from the linguist perspective, if you look into newspapers, for example, what you will find, 
the community was saying, we had to kill her, we had to kill her because it was our moral duty to kill her, while the broader Indian community will say that, no, it's evil, it's cruel, jail, hang this person. So there are two kinds of moral appeals. So what I want to say is that it's quite flexible. But is that, so these appeals to morality and politeness is a kind of broader behavior which cannot be predicted, like in this case. An overview where a customer is abused by a servant. It's quite a funny example. In America, you know, overweight is a big problem. And, one of, and there's an overweight guy who goes to a, a, a restaurant and says that I would like chocolate chip pancakes with a side of bacon, a peanut butter milkshake. Mm. That's not Indian food, so I'm sorry. But anyway, the server says, I'm just trying to make suggestions for options that are a little bit healthier for you. I got to tell you, I feel really bad about drinking all this food. This syrup alone can add over 200 calories to your meal. It's really horrible because obviously it has to be the dirty customer that you are fat and I'm not serving you. If you would want, I can bring out some skim milk or something. And then one of the customers say that what business is it of yours? And the server says, I don't feel right. There's an epidemic in our country. And then there's other customers saying that he is stupid. Just enjoy it. You're here just to enjoy your Saturday. Don't let it ruin your day. And deserve to have a nice breakfast. And the other customer to the server, it's not your job to tell people how to be healthy. It's insulting. So exactly, everybody makes all kinds of appeals. Like the wrongdoer says that it's my duty to protect you. You shouldn't be eating this bad thing. It's very rude, very evil, but of course, it's a moral appeal, just like in the case of these ritual killings. They say that it was our duty, we had to do this. But it would feel very bad if we didn't kill that girl. It's horrible, but with the same argumentation. Yeah? Okay, uh, so intervention, yes. Uh, this is the model of how bystander intervention works. So if it's not a ratified intervention, then the intervention needs to take part. They need to get to, to dig his nose or her nose into the business of others, which is quite difficult because it's going on and it's not my business, but I still need to do something. So basically, as you see, there's a circle of people and the intervening person is an outsider. Usually the intervening person makes a morality appeal, but sometimes a politeness appeal. Usually the wrongdoer makes a politeness appeal, but also a morality appeal. Now there is an in important category behind the bystanders. In your case, and this is such an amazing example, uh, the thing is that intervention takes place much easier if there is weight behind. So if there are others to help. So for example, others observing and you intervene. What are you are trying to do? Is to try as an intervener to get others help as well. So there's a sense of competition for the bystanders' grace. But I could also find data in which the inter in the wrongdoer track got the support for the, the, the bystanders. Like in my case, there was that gay couple going to the, the, the pub in, in or, a, or, a, or a pub in Texas. And, you know, uh, but somebody stood up saying that you shouldn't be, you should, to the waitress, you shouldn't send them away just because they are gay. But then there are some other customers standing up that no, send them away. So you know, the bystander, find, so the intervener finds himself in a minority. That's an interesting scenario. So anything goes, anything can happen in these scenarios. So we can only mod, mod, try to model the general mechanism of this event. Now, this is quite interesting from the politeness researcher's perspective again, although we are not doing politeness research per se, because we could see that politeness is not necessarily good. It's sometimes the wrongdoer who makes an appeal to politeness. Because the traditional kind of politeness research, they always said that impoliteness is the evil little brother of politeness. But is it the case, really? No, I don't think so. In this case, it's often the politeness is a tool for the wrongdoer. And just going back, for a moment to covert offense, which we intend to study, we agreed that sometimes evil people fringe their behavior as polite. But of course, they cannot be genuinely impolite. But sometimes people like the police help in a very rude way, but it can be genuinely impolite. This is what they are supposed to do, right? So I think I, I stop here. Um,
because we need some time for the workshop. But before we go on and I give the work to Ritesh, let me ask if you have any other question. Now that we can still have a short discussion, but see there is one definitely. Okay, so the response was, do you need the right form? Right? Isn't it? So say it again because I couldn't hear this. Do you need the right form? A, a right form? No, no, a right form in that restaurant, right? Yeah. yeah. The restaurant. No, no, no. Huh? The girl and the abusive, abusive boyfriend in the park. Yeah, yeah. So do you need the right? Do you need the right home or sorry? So I, 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 yeah, yeah. Is it a crisp data? Uh, no, no. No, I mean it's, it's affiliating with the victim. I mean, no, no. I mean the intervening person disaffiliates herself from the wrongdoer, and of course she gets closer to victim. So that's not aggression. She's being aggressive towards the wrongdoer. Okay, so if a woman says this, you, you say that if a, but for example, if a man, like let's say. I know, well, but don't speculate. Mm -hmm. This is the data. This is the data we have. Yeah. I mean, if a man says it, this would be another setting. In this setting, this is what we have as data. No, no, but since you're trying to work on software, like for example, you'll be working on like, I, I expect, you know, probably, since I don't know anything, I'm just asking you, if, like, do, I, do you need a right home? Maybe, even if it's a woman, it, it's not as safe as it sounds. Ah, yeah, well, of course, but it's already an it's a, but, but on the other hand, this is situated, this address is situated as any address. It's situated in an aggression scenario in which it might be an offer actually to transport the victim away from the wrongdoer. So I'm not sure. But again, um, we are talking about the detection of aggression, and hopefully, it won't take place in our program because we want the police to intervene. And if the police ask the victim whether you need the right home, it's a proper offer. Yeah. So again, I wouldn't worry about this too much. No, personally. but the money. Uh, compared to the other examples, like, uh, let's say, I, th I think that the West has some ridiculous laws. Okay, for example, let's say uh, about giving people a lift. For example, hmm? giving people a lift. Yeah, yeah, so like, uh, people seem to uh, agree that it is uh, good to help people in need. But uh, what I, if I read correctly, it is actually illegal to offer someone a lift, a stranger a lift. But, well, I don't know. I'm not sure about this, but we are talking. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would suggest let's not get lost okay. into these details because it's very legal and it's very far beyond what we want to study here. So I appreciate this, but it's going very, very far. We are ending up in lows and things like this, but we are not interested in this stuff at the moment. Yeah, because it's, I mean, when, when there's a sense of aggression, think about this woman, she just tries to help another woman. It might be that it's illegal to offer a lift, but it's just intensified emotions here. So I don't think that there is anything wrong with this. But again, let's not speculate about this thing because it's highly speculative. Just let's stay on the ground. It's, I know it's very interesting and it's easy to get hijacked, but you know, firm on ground, firm on ground. But thanks for these questions. But I suggest, because we have relatively limited time, I mean, how about if we had a short break now?